But then you look at Anana in goal. He was he looked awful. He looked a mistake waiting to happen. Paul, why did Liverpool not just put in swinging corners on top of his head? Why why not? Why why did they persist without swing corners for the whole match? Um, that's a question I don't know. But I well, what would you, if you're a goalkeeper? If you're at him. And yeah. he's he was much worse than crosses, much worse than crosses than you, by the way. You were a hundred times better. But why are they not putting crosses on his head? That's putting, something you know, that players the around scouting him. department look at, and it's something that I I question why not because yes, yeah. it is a weakness of his. Um, I was at the Burnley Everton game at the weekend. Sean Dyche identified a weak weakness in James Trafford, the Burnley goalkeeper. Yeah. Every single set play. I mean, you, you won't get extended highlights on match the day. It wasn't that good. But I was there. I watched the whole game. I saw yeah, no, I watched the game more, as well. More goals, than, more goals than Anfield, that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> Every single set play, the six-yard box was full yeah. and the ball was delivered under the bar. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've looked at the stats. I did a comparison between the two goalkeepers of Alisson and Onana before the game. I mean, Onana's come in. And the, the big thing for me is everybody looks back and says last season he's playing for Inter, Champions League final, etc. He had one season at Inter Milan. He played 24 games for Inter Milan. That's it. Before that, he was at Ajax for a long time, played over 100 games for Ajax. But we've seen that in the area Eredivisie. Look at the players that come out of the Eredivisie. They struggle in the Premier League. Look at the ones that Manchester United have signed. And him, for me, he's not a better goalkeeper than David De Gea. He may think he's better with his feet, but because of the, he's better with his feet, they use him to the detriment of the team because it goes backwards, sideways and slows it down. Looking at the clean sheets, OK, he's, he's joint top in clean sheets in the Premier League with five. But me as a goalkeeper, I wouldn't judge myself on clean sheets because that's the team thing. You may get two or three that screen past you, you've got no chance. Goalkeeper's mm. not judged on, on, on clean sheets. Sweeper keeper, which is what he was brought in to do, he's ranked 17th in the Premier League. He's had three interventions since he's come in. Saves, he's fifth on 57 saves. But both, all three of us have been making 57 saves playing for Man United the way they're playing. Um, jury's out on him and he's not good enough to play for Manchester United the way that he's playing at the moment. And he's cost him too many points. Look at the mistakes he's made in the Champions League at Bayern Munich, at Galatasaray. 15 conceded in six Champions League games. Mm, I mean, that's that's that says it all, doesn't it? And the one thing coming back but, to... But players do look after the self a lot of the time. Yeah. That is genuinely fascinating. I, I don't think I've ever thought about that in that perspective about how you can be alienated. I think it's obvious now, you know, now you hear the likes say about Jaden Sancho, he's been he's training on his own or whatever. But that's really interesting, Paul, to get that first hand insight. But maybe about maybe that. he's got that that foresight of okay, you treat me like that. Whatever's gone on, I'm not I don't want to go into the politics of what's gone on, who should say sorry, or what's how do you write mm. the wrong situation? He's maybe sat there thinking, I'm gonna last longer than you at this football club. He's waiting for wow. the next manager. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and and you know he's still at a very young age with a very long contract, so he doesn't absolutely have to go in January, does he? You know he's he on a anywhere. I mean, three hundred thousand pound a week contract. He's still a young lad earning a fortune, yeah. playing mm. at one of if not the biggest football clubs in the world, and he's sat there thinking, well, if results keep going, we won't have this problem in the, any, next week because he'll be gone. Well, from a neutral perspective, it still absolutely stinks, and I think any. Top level player who who does that, I think it's so it's, it's so so wrong. His behaviour has been deplorable from Jaden Sancho. I um, mean, you know, I've I've been critical of Eric Ten Hag's management man management methods over the last few weeks in this podcast, but um, I, I go with him on this one. I think San, Sancho's been an absolute disgrace. Um, anyway, well, we digress. Well, there's, there's only so many, many times that a manager can be undermined as a manager, as a, a leader of a dressing room you can't be seen to be undermined. And that's that's the situation. And that's where we're at with it, I think. Hmm. I guess it remains to be seen what, what comes of that. It reminds me a lot of the incident involving Kepper in the in the Carabao Cup final, where he was saying, no, I'm not coming off the field. And there was that whole argument with Sari, you know. And that was one of, I think, the strangest incidents in football that has ever happened. As a strong manager, they would have just got him off. They would not have accepted it. And he was, he was not a strong manager, sorry. His, um, Kepper's behaviour that day was... Awful and deplorable. It Absolutely was completely deplorable. deplorable. But a strong manager would have just got him off. Whatever they wouldn't and have what it, was... they wouldn't lie to him. And he, was, and, he, and he was injured, so it was beyond selfish. And they lost. So it, you know, lost, it's like yeah. after after all of that, after all the hoo ha of that happening, they, they still didn't even win. It's just yeah. that really was really was so strange. But anyway, we'll move on. You've just watched a segment from Football Insider's brand new podcast, The Inside Track, with me, Lewis Pierce, alongside the guests on the show. Thanks very much for tuning in. Please do give the video a like, comment your thoughts on the topic and feel free to share on your social media pages. If you want to listen to the full podcast episode, click the link in the description below. Keep your eyes peeled for plenty more content and exclusives here on the Inside Track.